primary tool of a forensic scientist is the microscope. And when you're dealing with something the size of a mountain, you are the microscope. This is looking at a cross section of the skull bone and you can see that it looks like a sandwich. You have two thick layers of solid bone and then this is known as spongous bone. And as I mentioned before, this is where the blood is formed in both the skull but primarily in the long bones of the body. I talked briefly about this as well. This area here, I'm theorizing that this is the spongious bone that's been exposed. So the outer layer has fallen off and whenever you're walking around the mountain and you see a chunk of stone that has fallen away from the mountain, then it exposes this reddish, iron-rich area. And you can see this here in a very large segment that's missing. All of the horizontal surfaces of the mountain are covered in what is known as karst, which is another form of limestone that's notable because it has all sorts of different channels and fissures in it, which mainstream geology tells us are formed because of the acidic nature of rain mixing with the limestone and dissolving the calcium carbonate. So these fissures here, they grow as time goes on. That's the, according to the mainstream model. I would suggest that there's a simpler explanation that these are actually channels that are formed by blood vessels. And as we go through some of the samples that I'll be showing later, I want you to keep this mainstream geological explanation in mind because I don't think it explains a number of the samples that I'll be showing you today. If we look at the long bones, we've got this compact bone area here, which you can see better here, which is in layers. And I'll show another picture in a moment that, that illustrates that from a different angle. But inside is the spongious bone filled with all kinds of blood vessels. This is where the, the blood is produced, the red blood cells of the body. Your bone marrow is there, big portion of your immune system as well. This is looking at the cross section of the compact bone, it looks like layers of a tree growing outward. Yeah. So this is trabecular bone. If we look here, this is looking at it under a microscope and you can see it's fractal in nature. You've got bigger and bigger holes going down to smaller and smaller and smaller holes. This is a pelvic bone, and you can see here when the outer layer is broken away, you get the spongious bone exposed. And here it is with blood. And cross-section with the blood remaining, but all of the water is gone, obviously. So keep this image in mind when I start to show you some of these rocks in a moment. Most of the specimens that I'll be showing you today are going to be from this region of the plateau. And we talked before, I'll mention it again in a little bit, but this, this area here, this is what all of the earth looks like when you scratch at the surface. Any, any rock that you lift up, you got this reddish colored earth. Mainstream geology would be telling you that these channels are formed by water moving through and slowly eroding and creating larger and larger fissures. So all across the plateau are, are rocks that look like this. They're either filled with reddish earth or the earth is completely gone and you just have a nice channel there. This is also found all over the plateau. This is iron ore and you can see here it's stuck to the sides of the rock and all of these rocks are just filled with iron ore on the outside or in these channels and it clumps up. If we look at the constitution of blood, you've got the red blood cells making up 45% and then plasma, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So this is iron ore and iron ore is found all over the plana. And you can see here the rich red color of the earth below. And you can see a specimen up close. I think that all these little cracks and everything, to me this looks very biological. Doesn't doesn't look like something that was formed by, by chance. You've got all these different passages going different directions. And you can see how this iron loves to stick to the sides of the of the limestone. And then inevitably there are these channels that are filled with combinations of red earth and chunks of this little iron ore. Now again, ask yourself if these look like 
fissures that are formed from water going through cracks or if this looks more biological in nature. This is one of the fields that I showed before from above right here. You can see the trees and the, the rich red color of the soil. And this is a real fascinating specimen because you can see down here this chunk has broken away exposing the inside and you can see here that where that rock is broken away there's literally red earth oozing out of channels another angle and here we're looking down into larger blood vessels and if you look each of these larger spaces here break off into smaller channels so this is exactly what I would expect to find with the fractal nature of blood vessels So if we compare the trabecular bone and the long bones of the body to the trabecular bone that's in the skull, this is of a much smaller nature. And if we look at the rock that's found on the top of the mountain, the skull, and we compare that to the rocks that are found below, you can see these channels are huge compared to the ones that are found on the top of the mountain. But this is the top of the mountain. This is looking at the cross from the direction of the, the peak. And all of this karst landscape, which I believe is trabecular or spongious bone, it's all anchored in the bedrock. And that's consistent with the anatomy of the bones. You can see it's just a sea of trabecular bone.